you already have to go through this horrific thing, especially with cancer. Oh boy. You can improve the quality of your life by yeah. increasing the mood. I, it's amazing the things that I get to see every day. Welcome to Be Informed, Be Well with John Malanka. Hey everybody, welcome back. John Malanka here with United Patient Group, Be Informed and Be Well. And I'm really excited because I have a guest on here, Kylie Shumway, who we've actually been on the been on the, the video talking for about an hour here. So uh, excited to, to get back. And I said, we better just start filming. But Kylie, good to see you. How are you doing? I am so good. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you're going to love her energy, everyone. So so Kylie, the reason I have Kylie on here, Kylie is a pharmacist, and I truly believe that pharmacists need to be more involved. And I love it that the 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 younger pharmacists are coming on board and and leading the way. And I want to say young, you know, you've been a pharmacist for for six years, and so you've seen a lot, you know a lot. Um, can you share? You're out of Utah. You're with an organization called Wholesome Co, mm -hmm. and it's one of the first dispensaries, cannabis dispensaries that, because Utah, we've done a lot of work with Utah and it used to be a CBD only lost state. And mm -hmm. so um, now uh, THC is available for patients. And so you um, work in the actual dispensary. It's a beautiful dispensary, but you work in a dispensary to help patients because it's not a one size fits all. You know, you should look at age, weight, current health condition, but also sensitivities and drug to drug mm -hmm. interactions. And mm -hmm. so you're in there talking with patients, giving uh, guidance, protocols, dosing, et cetera. And so um, little, how about a little background on you, Kylie? So I graduated in 2016, but I had been interested in cannabis for much longer than that. Um, my dad got sick when I first got into pharmacy school and he got cancer and he was wasting away. He was not, the, the chemo was killing him faster than it was killing his cancer. And my mom and I decided we were going to take him out of state because at the time it was illegal in Utah to have cannabis. And we were going to treat him without telling his doctors. And we did. And it, it, he totally turned around. He started eating again. He gained weight. So he gained all of his weight back. He's about six, five, and he was 180 pounds when we decided it was time. And he got back to up to his normal weight. He was probably 230 pounds when he got back up to his normal weight. And it was just that moment of like, I want to do this for somebody. And I'm in pharmacy school and I, I could do this. And I would tease my boyfriend at the time that I was good. He better be ready to move out of state because I was going to be a cannabis pharmacist. So that was, that's kind of way back, my way back background. Wow. But, um, I did stay in Utah uh -huh. and I became a compounding pharmacist, um, much more interested in the way in, I wanted to do individualized medicine. I didn't want to do this big box. Everybody gets Prozac type of medicine. I wanted individual patients, individualized medicine. And now in cannabis, I get to do that here in Utah. In Utah, every dispensary has to have a pharmacist and every patient is required to meet with the pharmacist the first time. And I can go over their disease states and then I can ask them, you know, their goals for treatment. And then I can help them find realistic goals for cannabis because it's not a panacea. It is not the answer for every single patient, but it is the answer for a whole lot of people. So that's kind of where my passion lies is this educating patients, educating providers and educating the public. Even if you're never going to use cannabis, you should be educated on it as well. Because someone well, in your life is going to use it. And that's what I say, you know, ailments, disease um, does not discriminate and you can no. be the healthiest, healthiest person in the world. Um, doesn't matter what your background is. An ailment could, could, uh, at any moment come any moment, but I think options and that's the part, you know, I'm the first to say, and, and even you and I were agreeing off camera, you know, cannabis is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I'm the first to say that, but at least give them options. And especially when you've been diagnosed with something as cancer, you mm -hmm. have cancer, your whole world just comes halting. And yes. you will try anything. Does it, you know, if someone says, Hey, eat your, eat your mouse. We've seen, you success. will find a way to do it. You will eat ma your mouse, you know, eat your notepad, you know, we'll start, you know, start chewing <laughs> on that as well. And so 
I think is great, but I think helping bring the stigma down, um, you know, California has been legal since 1996. And I love how other states are improving on what we have done here because mm-hmm. it was the wild, wild west for years. And when <laughs> Chris and I jumped into this, um, you know, it has been night and day compared to where it was then to where it is today. And so, and there's so many different, you know, I learn every day and, and I know you, you were talking about that as well and all the different cannabinoids, you know, what's a cannabinoid, you know, and so you start talking, you know, I always say there's about 140, some people say 160, some people say 113, but more and more being introduced each and every day. Mm-hmm. No one knew what CBD was, you know, 10 years ago. No one knew what CBN was five years ago. No. You know, and then the acid form, THCA, CBDA, but they all play a role in bringing the body mm-hmm. back to, to uh, home. And we need all the pieces. That's the, you that's do, the next you thing. You have to have every piece. So now with CBD and the hemp laws, mm-hmm. now it's, it's legal. I say they, everyone says all 50 states. I think it's r- realistic. What is it? 48 states that, that I think uh, that's more realistic. C- CBD is and so there is still a gray area. Mm-hmm. 0.3% is the legal limit of THC in, in, in the cannabis or the hemp plant, I should say, when yeah. they extract, extract CBD. And so you're able to purchase it online. Unfortunately, you're able to purchase it at your grocery store, gas station, <laughs> 7-Eleven, et cetera. And that's yeah. not probably where I want to go. And as time has gone on, other products have come up that aren't, aren't healthy. Spice. Spice was another synthetic type of cannabis product mm-hmm. or THC product. I guess it mimicked THC, but synthetic and a lot of. Yeah, changes. it wasn't it wasn't truly shaped like THC, but it did fit into some of the same locks. Yeah. And so pe- people were when they were consuming were in some cases, unfortunately, um, dying but mm-hmm. also getting really sick. And so I think the government has cracked down on that. And then this last year with the farm bill being passed a few years ago, there was, I guess there was a kind of uh, uh, another gray area in there yes. and another, um, I guess, product, would you say derivative or would you say a cannabinoid? So it is a cannabinoid that occurs okay. naturally in the plant, just not in quantities high enough to make it good for extraction. Gotcha. So. And so what Kylie is talking about, what we're going to discuss is what is Delta 8? And can you share what Delta 8 is? And when I say like Delta 9 THC, would I also say Delta 8 THC? Or I mean, there's so many. It is Delta 8 THC. So it's shaped exactly like Delta 9 THC. The shape is all of the same. But if you look at it, you can see that one of the double bonds in one of the rings is in a different position and that is it. There is a different double bond. Your body doesn't actually know the difference. Truly, it will it will throw it at all the same locks, all the same receptors that um, Delta nine would fit into. The difference is bonding affinity. So how strongly it grabs on to the lock, how long it fits in that lock. That's the difference. So when you, when you say, when you say shape, I know what you're talking about, but for our audience, can you share what you're talking about um, when you're, when you're saying shape with. So with it's the, like the shape of the molecule, every molecule is shaped different. And it's just that the shape of the actual molecule is exactly the same as Delta nine with a differing bond. So it just is, I wish I had a little picture for you. Yep. Yeah, maybe we can <laughs> pop one up on the screen when, yeah. when we edit this. But Delta 9, Delta 9 THC is what we're seeing out in the... Mm-hmm. In the uh, that's what everybody thinks of as, as cannabis. They think of that Delta 9, that's that really heavy psychoactive feeling that you feel. That's that Delta 9. Yep. And Delta 8 is shaped exactly the same as that one with a differing double bond. And that is that is it. And so it's bonding affinity is just a little different. And so does Delta, I mean, what, what is the purpose of Delta 8? Does Delta 8 give the, uh, give off the same benefits of Delta 9? And it's, um, what about the psychoactive effects of Delta 8 versus Delta 9? So it does give a lot of the same effects as Delta 9, but it gets kicked off of the receptor faster. So it feels less psychoactive when I think it's just psychoactive different. Yeah. I would think of it as different. So it doesn't bind as strongly in the central nervous system. So that heavy head high that everybody associates with Delta nine where it bonds really well is actually in the peripheral. So like in the trunk of the body, you have a lot of CB2 receptors in the trunk of your body around your organs. And so 
that is where Delta eight has its best action. That's where it binds the best. So you'll get a lot of patients that come in and they feel like it's a body high. They call it a body high. And, and that's cause that's where it binds the best is in the, the trunk of the body in the, in the middle and around all of your organs and everything. So it's really good for inflammation in the gut. So Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, the I, the um, irritable bowel diseases, all of those uh, nausea. So really great anti-emetic effects from Delta eight and Delta eight is found naturally in the plant. So I just like want to be really clear about that, that it is found naturally in the plant. So it's not, a, it's not a synthetic form. I wouldn't call it synthetic. There's a lot of gray area with what we call synthetic and what yeah. is synthetic. We do synthesize it, but it is naturally occurring in the plant. You, you know, I'm probably getting ahead of myself here because okay. you know, the, the, the FDA you know, you see both the pros and cons, mm -hmm. I think, in everything, especially with what's going on today. Yeah. With vaccine safe, not safe. Mask safe, not safe. You know, traveling safe, not safe. Mm -hmm. And now with Delta 8, even the, on the FDA's website, it, of course, has all the warnings on there. And so, oh. um, you know, so I, I do see a lot. It's not safe. It's extraction uh, methods. People are getting sick. And mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of this with a lot of 18 and under. Now, mm -hmm. is that because is it legal in all 50 states? And do you need to have a doctor's recommendation for it? So it's not legal in all 50 states. I think there's 18 states right now that outright have banned it because it is so hard to regulate because of the farm bill. It has, it's, it's this huge gray area and states are tired of trying to regulate it. So they're just banning it outright. And, and part of it may be that they don't understand what the CDC and the FDA has actually come out and said, it's not the Delta eight molecule itself that is problematic for humans. It is the byproducts of the synthesis in markets where it's not regulated. So I can speak for Utah specifically in the dispensaries, in the pharmacies here in Utah, we are heavily regulated. When we make a Delta nine product in the pharmacy, yeah. we have to, it has to be 95% pure. It has to go through testing. It goes through mass spec gas chromatography. So all of these machines that help us see what's actually in there, I can see what actual molecules are in whatever I'm testing with yeah. these machines. So if they're not 95% pure, we can't sell it in the pharmacy. But if you go to the gas station or if you go to the CBD shop down the street, they're not under the same regulations because of the farm bill. Gotcha. So they're not being tested. And I have in my pharmacy, I have all the certificates of analysis that show what showed up on the testing and I can produce those at any time. Beautiful. So it's a very, it's two different worlds. It's that regulated world. And then it's that totally unregulated people are making it in their basement or whatever they're doing. That's where the true problem lies is in those byproducts because you do use a catalyst. So you do use an acid to change the bonds that you need to. And if those aren't washed out properly, if you, if you don't get rid of those properly, they can leave harmful byproducts behind. So it's really important if you're going to get Delta eight, that it comes from a regulated market. So a lot of the, I guess the benefits that are listed, so not on the FDA, but other websites to benefit, mm -hmm. they're very similar to the benefits of Delta nine THC. They are. But also CBD. So why would someone mm -hmm. take a chance of taking a non-regulated product Delta eight versus a, um, product that you carry your dispensary, uh, THC product, the CBD product, or any other cannabinoid, but you have certificates analysis. And so, uh, so I hearing, hearing, you, hearing you correctly, you don't, you do not carry Delta eight in your, we in do. Your, oh, you do. We do, but it's all regulated and I, it's 95% pure. Oh, wow. So we carry Delta eight products in the pharmacy yeah. that I can prove that there's none of those byproducts left behind. There's no acids left behind in there. There's no other, there's nothing else in there that's not supposed to be in there. It's only in like the gas station in the CBD shop where they don't have those and they don't have to have the same testing that we do. So, so, so you do see benefits in. 
We do. I use it for lots of patients that have the, the Crohn's disease, the ulcerative colitis, yeah. um, the nausea, um, people that have had colon cancer or they're, they're sick a whole lot. Wow. Um, patients that just are nauseous and we don't know why. Yeah. And it, and it makes it and it, because it's a little bit less psychoactive in the central nervous system, you can use Delta eight and then go to work and go on with your day. And you don't have to be super high to get the benefit. And which is true across the board for cannabis. You don't have to get really high to have the benefit from cannabis. I share that all the time when people mm-hmm. come to come to us and they say, I want the medical portion. Yeah. And, and so in a lot of people's mindset, the medical is CBD. THC which, is recreational, which is a and horrible so I, misconception. Totally. And I share that, you know, my brother's been in the wine business for 30 years. And I say, you know, it's like going wine tasting. You can have a sip. You're okay. Yep. You have three <laughs> bottles. You're going to be intoxicated. And same thing yeah. with THC. So you don't have to do this THC. You can do one, you two, can three, microdose. three, three, three mil- yeah, Exactly. Which, yeah. I, which I, I am a big fan of. So I'm still, I, I'm, I'm, you're okay. I, I don't, um, that's the part. I mean, I always hear the, 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 the cons about Delta, Delta mm-hmm. nine. So, um, and I was like that with, with, um, the hemp market when it came in because everybody and their mother came in and you just saw a bunch of crap, excuse my language. It, it, it is. It was a lot there. of like, they couldn't prove what was in there. They couldn't show that they were making what they were saying. And it's that all over again. It's, it's people making products that are, not tested properly. And then it's the mislabeling. The other really big thing that the FDA had been talking about were mislabeled products. So people were going into these CBD shops, they were buying what they thought was it were CBD gummies or something. And then they were getting really high and they were reporting that. And then the FDA has to report that as an adverse event because no one told this poor patient that there was Delta eight THC in their gummy and so they were wow. getting effects that they were unwanted. They didn't want to be high. And there's an unregulated amount of Delta eight in some of these products. They don't, they don't have it on the packaging. So no one knows how much is in there. The, you know what I, I've, I've tried, uh, I have a lot of companies that will send me products and um, many, I try many, I don't, you know, and I, and, and I will make sure they have leverage, but there's some products, some CBD products and I'm totally blasted. Oh, you know, yeah. And I'm thinking, I call them up. I said, how is this possible? Oh, you must be sent. And I, and I, I know I'm sensitive, but there's days I'll do in the daytime. And there's a couple of products. Like I can't, I can't even do this in the daytime. Can't I function. Concentrate. So is that, is that what, what it's affecting? That's exactly what that, wow. that could very well be. What it is, is a Delta okay. eight is in there and they've not told anybody um, because they don't have to. Because... So you can, you can extract Delta eight from a hemp CBD plant as well. So you, that's mostly where Delta eight comes from. They will use, so they're all cannabis sativa, but we'll call the, we'll call the ones that are higher in CBD and lower in THC hemp for ease from these hemp plants. We extract the CBD and then they go through this process where we change that. We change CBD into Delta eight THC. And it's a simple, all we've got to do is close a ring. It's a, it's a pretty simple process. And it's why it's so popular in these markets because it's so easy to do. And then you get a product that, you know, some people love because they get, they can get high and some people are like, oh my gosh, I'm high and I hate this. Who made this? Why isn't this the CBD gummy that I thought it was? So it's a pretty simple process to change CBD into Delta eight THC. So does this benefit the patients that live in illegal states that are CBD only states or, or don't have any medical law, no cannabis laws. Absolutely. So they're, they're turning to this saying, okay, I can still, I can still get some relief here. It's not exactly the same yeah. as Delta nine, but it's, yeah. it's a lot of the same benefit as Delta nine with a little less psychoactivity. Um, I wouldn't call it not psychoactive. Yeah. I think it's about depending on the person it's about 80%. So it's, it's really close to the same psychoactivity. So, you know, a lot of the benefits of Delta eight, you see the same thing you do see in in CBD though, pain Mm -hmm. relief, stress release, anti-inflammatory helps with, um, appetite, um, um, health and wellness balance. Mm -hmm. Um, Because your endocannabinoid system is in charge of homeostasis. Mood, 
as well as cramps. And so yep. you're talking about the gut as well. The trunk, <laughs> the whole trunk. Yep. And so, so I just, I don't know. I think to be safe, just from what I'm hearing, is it safer for patients to go with a, C, a tested CBD product? Or are you feeling confident enough that, with, like you said, in your, in your dispensary? Um, in my dispensary, I would give Delta 8. No problem. Not a concern for me. I would never send a patient down the street to the CBD shop to get Delta 8. Gotcha. Never. Yeah, the, the ones that are popping up right now, I, I kind of route people away from that for, yeah. for, for that reason. And so with Delta 8, it doesn't sound like you need a cannabis recommendation from a uh, doctor or medical expert. Not in the States where they haven't banned it yet. Okay. And so how long is it? So are people using it, consuming it the same, same type of method via inhalation, topicals, yep. um, gummies, edibles, tinctures. Gotcha. Tinctures. So, it's so there's a whole edible. other market that's, that's promoting the the Delta eight, it's funny. It really hasn't taken off in California. Like it probably has in other States. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, just because I think everyone has, it doesn't have to in California, you can get whatever you want in California, which is great. So how, (laughs) yeah, you know, people always say that too. (laughs) And back in the day when you needed a doctor's recommendation, it was the joke. Oh, I have a, I have a hangnail. Can I get a doctor's recommendation? (laughs) Here you go, Kylie. Oh, I have hiccups. Well, Here you go, Kylie. It's, it's when we ban things that yeah. everybody turns to this kind of gray market, this, this yeah. back alley, they, and they have to, because they have to have treatment. So let me just to pinpoint, I never thought Delta A was, was safe, but hearing you, it's good to hear that. But the things they should look out for are tested products, yes. Delta 8 products that do have the certificate of analysis, also known mm-hmm. as COA. COA. Um, like other cannabis products, I would say if something's six months or older, try to get a new, newer, newer yeah. product. Because they, do, they degrade. They, the, yeah. the cannabinoids go through a degradation process and especially THC will turn into CBN over time. Which is another cannabinoid. Which is another help, cannabinoid. Help sleep. Yeah. You and you, whatever sleep. you've got will make you much more sleepy. Um, Delta eight right now, the research shows that Delta eight, the molecule is safe for human consumption. Wow. It's all of the other pieces that could be the problem. It's, it's the products of the synthesis that could be a problem. Cause I don't know what they made their Delta eight with. I know what we make our Delta eight with. I know what my partners make their Delta eight with yeah. and there's different ways to do it. You don't always have to use an acid catalyst with enough time and enough pressure and enough heat. You could make Delta eight THC without using an acid, but you know, it would take some, some pretty sophisticated equipment. Which, which, which is, which is happening. And so, so how is it made? Are you, are they using um, CO2 extraction, butane, ethanol? I mean, what, what so are they doing? A lot doing of them are making- doing CO2 extraction. That's uh-huh. really popular in Utah right now. Uh-huh. Um, it's probably the most popular in Utah. Well, what, right now. what are your they thoughts? I mean, sorry to cut you off there. No. Super, super critical CO2 extraction was very popular in 2010, 2011, 2012. And then a lot of other companies came in and said, well, you're stripping the um, chlorophyll out of the plant. Mm -hmm. And so um, you being a a cannabis expert and working with patients, and what are your thoughts of that? So there are places I don't want chlorophyll. I wouldn't want chlorophyll in my vape cartridge. I would prefer if that wasn't uh, heated up and inhaled. Uh But if you had chlorophyll in a tincture, there's no, there's no problem. I don't know if they're, I wouldn't say that chlorophyll is part of the entourage effect. So while I think chlorophyll is great and we should have chlorophyll, we should make sure we eat lots of leafy greens and all of that. <clears throat> I don't know if it's one of the most important components in your cannabis. And, and so, for our, for our new listeners um, that you know, every, every day, like you said, ailment does not, um, uh, doesn't discriminate. It doesn't discriminate. And so every day we have people, you know, being diagnosed with something and they're unfortunately Googling everything nowadays. Mm-hmm. So can you, you just mentioned the endocannabinoid system. Mm-hmm. So can you just give like a, maybe a cliff note oh, yeah. of what the endocannabinoid so, system is? The endocannabinoid system is a series of receptors throughout your whole body. They are in your brain and they are in 
every system in the body. They in in all mammals. In all mammals, not just humans. So they're they're in all mammals, and they are what is kind of in charge of a lot of your homeostasis. They send the signals to your brain to to do all of the things that the body kind of needs to do. And our body makes its own type of cannabinoids. Anandamide is the big one that you are always hear about, but cannabis can act like those. So the cannabinoids in cannabis can fit into that same lock that your body's anandamide would fit into. So it's going to act a lot like that. I guess that's my most, that's my most simple way I could put that. It is quite a complicated system, but I, I always, I always do a cliff, cliff note version yeah. that people are like, Oh, I don't get it. And I said, well, cliff note version is our bodies um, recently discovered in the nineties that mm-hmm. we all have an endocannabinoid system. They're even saying now everything that has a vertebrate that, that, that <clears throat> we're finding more and more have CB1 and CB2 receptors. And I heard sea slugs now <laughs> you know, have, have them. And so, um, you know, but I guess everybody needs, needs some balance, but what that is is the endocannabinoid system and in cliff note version, what is it craving? Cannabinoids, cannabinoids mm-hmm. bringing the body back to balance. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, you don't have to be high to have, no. have to see the benefits. Um, one thing on, on my show, I've talked, you know, many, for regular listeners, you know, a lot of presentations, I'll have a roll of duct tape behind me on my presentation and people <laughs> laugh. They're like, Hey, John, you have the wrong slide. And I say, I put that up there because people always ask, does it work for this? Does it work for this? And I don't want to say it has the same use as a hundred one, a million and one uses like duct tape. But when you really get down to it, the benefits that this plant does offer, and again, it's not for everybody, it's but not. the science and benefits behind this plant, it, it will blow your mind on what it, what it can, can do. You know, to me, saving a life is, is, is uh, how we came out of the gate. For others, I sleep better, John. I'm able to go to the bathroom without pain. I'm able to see. I'm able to get off my opioids. I'm able to bring my stress and anxiety down. And so, you know, again, it's not for everyone, but at least giving uh, patients options. options. It's it's the same reason we have so so many um, antidepressants. Yeah. One antidepressant doesn't work for every single patient. And it's the exact same thing in cannabis. And not every patient needs cannabis. Yeah. And then not every patient needs the same cannabis. It's not a one size fits all. And it's why I love that pharmacists are so involved with it totally. here mm-hmm. is because we are so accessible. Your pharmacist is so accessible. Um, the appointments with me are free. You can come and see me as many times as you need to. And we can work out what's working and what's not working for you, just you. Even if, you know, I have two of the same person, yeah. the exact same disease, they need a different treatment. Thank you. All, every time. So this one comes up all the time. Um, John, how long will it stay in my system? And so <laughs> how long will this stay in my system? One. And then two, uh, Kylie, is Delta, uh, Delta 8 showing up on a drug test? Unfortunately, it does show up on drug tests. Mm -hmm. So the metabolite is really, I think it's pretty much exactly the same. So most drug tests that are testing for THC, you're testing for the metabolites that are left over after the liver kind of does, does its job. And Delta eight leaves the same metabolite. So it will show up in a drug test, but you know, with hopefully with the way that we're going, people will stop. I, I don't, I don't. We should just stop testing for THC. That's my opinion. Here I am yeah. on this podcast telling everybody that, and here we go. Um, and then it stays in your system. So if you are, it's a, it's a huge range. It could be two days. It could be 30 days, two days for, for light use. So you don't use very often. And, and this is Delta eight specifically. Mm-hmm. So it's about two days. If you really light use, you don't use very often. And then it's 30 days if you're using really heavily. So there's a huge span and then it comes down to what liver enzymes you have, like how much of the certain liver enzyme that you need to break down Delta eight, do you personally make and what's your body composition? There's a whole bunch of factors. I wish I had the exact, this is, this is the black and white answer, but that's not how medicine ever works. Boy, oh boy. So, so true. You know, you mentioned about going to the liver and stuff like that, that earlier we spoke about the different forms that Delta eight 
comes in. What would you, what do you see with patients? Um, uh, I know onset, some patients who are in pain want to use ingestion method via smoking uh, or vaporization and others prefer tincture or less, mm -hmm. you know, a little more discreet. I, a lot uh, of my patients love tinctures because they look so medical. And okay. they love that. It make, they're really comfortable with that. So capsules and tinctures, they mm -hmm. look really medical. And so a lot of my older patients or maybe patients that are a little more nervous, they love those just because they feel safe. Um, I like layering. So using a tincture or an edible, so you can have long relief, six or eight hours, depending on your body. Yeah. And then layering in an inhalation form when you have breakthrough pain or you need pain relief right now. Um, it's not for everybody, but a lot of my patients have really, really good luck with that kind of like layering. And, but it takes some trial and error. It's always trial and error. Trial and error. You know, a lot of this is, is safety. So you're not mm -hmm. you know, for that. And, and, you know, a lot of patients will say, John, I wake up after I take a, this CBN product. Um, and I say, you know, sometimes when you wake up, depending, and that's what I do. Like if I wake up and it's, midnight or one compared to 4 a.m. You know, if I get up to go to the restroom, I'll take another dropper of CBN yeah. and go back to sleep. Yeah, because that'll Time, work in 20 minutes. Totally. And so I, I just go right back and fall asleep. Here's one. With Delta 8, with the laws being gray area, mm -hmm. is a patient able to travel outside of their state legally with Delta 8? Or is that not, have, has that not been? No, uh, I, I wouldn't. Okay. Um, mostly because the, if you got pulled over, they won't know the difference. Okay. They don't know the difference. Um, and so then if you, if you go into a state where it's banned, yeah. I, I not worth it, huh? My big, don't cross state lines with cannabis. Yeah. I don't care what kind it is. Don't cross state lines. It's yes. federally illegal. Don't just don't cross state lines. So if if traveling, see if it's legal in the state you're traveling to, mm -hmm. and, and and go there. Um, and laws are changing really fast right now. Texas had Texas was the most recent one I can think of. They were just in yeah. October. They were having a big fight of whether they were going to ban it or not, and they just recently were like, "That is it. It's banned. It's over." Wow. So. Yeah, te Texas. I hear I hear more horror stories in the state of Texas than I do in the rest uh, of the states in our nation, and, yeah. and so it's disappointing. You know, just just because I mean, you know, you and I are talking offline, but with my father-in-law, the success that I saw with my father-in-law, you know, the discussion of cannabis would not have come up if we did not live in California mm -hmm. in a legal state. And it's sad to hear others that don't live in a legal state. And it comes up and they don't have legal access. And so that's the part that is disappointing. Like you shared with your boyfriend uh, at the time, you know, we may be leaving. Utah. We're moving. We're moving, you know, <laughs> and a lot of patients do that, um, you know, mm -hmm. the cannabis refugees. And when they do get up and leave, you know, not only leaving your community, your families, mm -hmm. your jobs, your doctor who already knows your whole background, Kylie. Mm -hmm. And you start you over. Know, and you start over, but a lot of families are forced to do that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, over the past 12 years of being in this industry, you know, I've, I've, I know of a lot of families that have left. Not all were successful. I have a dear friend, they moved from Georgia to California and they're doing extremely well. And they said, we did it for our, our, uh, uh, eldest child. That's amazing. Um, and the family now loves visiting from Georgia out here in California. <laughs> and they just say, you know, our life has changed. And, yeah. so, you know, so I've seen the, the, the true benefits of this plant, but again, do your research, make sure all your products are tested. Um, if you're able to, in your Utah, stop by wholesome and, and have, see me. <laughs> you know, have a, have a, have a one-on-one -on -one with Kylie and just get some guidance. I think I truly believe a medical professional should be involved. Um, just because you hear me talk about this all the time. It's not a one size fits all mm -mm. age, weight, current health conditions, sensitivities, as well as drug to drug interactions, as well as other modalities you may be on. And so other patients yeah. that are going through something, God forbid it's cancer, but chemo radiation, you can use a, a cannabis product side by side. It's not mm -hmm. going to zero anything out. It will help. It does have the benefits of not only healing, nausea, appetite, mood, 
um, you know, and again, hopefully bringing the body back to balance. Yeah. To, and, to, and that mood, the mood you mentioned, that's quality yeah. of life. Yeah. That's, you already have to go through this horrific thing, especially with cancer. Oh boy. You can improve the quality of your life by yeah. increasing the mood. I, it's amazing the things that I get to see every day. Every day. And that's the thing. And to hear the, the, the patients that come back and say, oh my gosh, I, I just thought this was going to be my way of life forever. And now I feel better. And so, mm -hmm. you know, pain is not a way of life. And no. if you're able to, you know, get out and try something and find something, um, stress and anxiety, I'm a major advocate of getting outside and working out. And that mm -hmm. helps bring my stress and anxiety. Find what works best for you. If cannabis is it, and we're including it into your daily routine and it's working fantastic, but I yeah. truly believe a medical professional should be involved. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Even if you live in a illegal state, it's not illegal to ask those questions. Absolutely. And if your doctor is not well-versed um, uh, on the, the benefits of this plant or the endocannabinoid system, ask them if they can refer you to someone in their Rolodex that may. And I guarantee with 2021 almost ending here, your doctors know somebody in their circle who knows about cannabis. If it's a doctor, if it's a nurse, or it's a pharmacist. And yeah. so, um, Kylie, before we leave, can you just give a little cliff note version of pros and cons of Delta eight? Well, one last, last time. Okay. So cons may not be made. Well, may not be on the packaging. Those are the big, those are the big cons. And it's not a psychoactive. Some people see that as a con. Some people see that as a pro. Uh, pros of Delta-8 are decreased psychoactivity for the people that don't want them. Works great in the trunk. So really fabulous for inflammation all over the body, but especially in, in the trunk. So even back pain, holy cow. I forgot to mention that earlier, but back pain, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. And then I think that that's, those, that's my cliff notes. Those are, those that's are what things. I got. So, so trunk, trunk in the body, not in the car. <laughs> yep. Yep. Trunk of the body. And that's the best way I could, I could, I don't want to call it like something too. Yeah. I don't want to get too, I don't know. I want to speak to people on the level that they're on. You know, and I think that's the best way to do it. You know, being able to, to not uh, talk in so yeah. much science where they're just looking at a deer in the headlight, you right. know, and explaining. That's why I use the cliff note version of that bringing the body back to balance, mm -hmm. you know, endocannabinoid system. What's it, what's it looking for? Cannabinoids and cannabinoids you know, come in all shapes and forms, but, mm -hmm. you know, and they're all, they all play, play a part and play a role. And so, um, Kylie, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on and, and, thank you. um, I, I, I would love to get you back on. I'd love to talk about pain. Please. I'd love to talk about drug to drug interactions, mm -hmm. um, and going from there. And so we'll, we'll make that, it will make that, a, a date in the, in the near future awesome. to, to get you back up here, but how can people find you? Uh, you can go on my website. It's wholesome.co and I am all over there. And you can call us, you could make an appointment. Um, I'm pretty easy to find. So um, uh, Utah, mm -hmm. so is Utah. So I'm California. If I came to Utah, would I have access to your dispensary or do I need a you medical? You would. I would. You would. So we finally got the law all taken care of and in place where if you have a medical card from another state, you can come here. You can go on the state's website. So that's evs.utah.gov. Yeah. And you can put your medical cards information in there and you can get a temporary card here. I'm not 100% sure how long they last. I think yeah. there's some limits on it, but you can get a card here and you can actually come and see me in my pharmacy. If I, you I think to. it's fantastic. So for the patients, so like myself, California being mm -hmm. adult use, uh, 21 and over, same thing in Colorado, Oregon, Washington no need for, for cannabis cards here, recommendations coming to your state. I would not be able to come in there. You would not, would, you'd have to have a card. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, is it, um, can they get a card like the online things or does it have to be an official, <clears throat> excuse me, state approved card with the state? Could... For, I think they'll take any medical card from a state where it's legal. Gotcha. Okay. 
So, um, you know, and I always share with everyone to, you know, go to your department of health of your state mm -hmm. and there's and type in medical cannabis division or medical marijuana division, and they'll have a list of laws uh, as well as recommending physicians. Um, not, they're not always up to speed when it comes to the science and the endocannabinoid system. They did take a course, but I think it's education, starting education. And I always mm -hmm. talk about the pebble in the palm with the ripple effects and getting the education out. And that's why we do do shows like this. And so Kylie Shumway, Kylie Shumway, Thank love you. the name. Um, and you can find her at wholesome.co. If you're in Utah, stop by the dispensary. And what city is it in, in Utah? We're in Bountiful. So just a few minutes away from Salt Lake City. Close. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Bountiful. Bountiful. So um, everyone, thank you very much, Kylie, for being on. Uh, this is John Malanke with the United Patients Group. Be informed and be well, and we will see you soon. Have a great, great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Be Informed, Be Well with John Malanka. Be Informed, Be Well is brought to you by United Patients Group. Come and visit us at unitedpatientsgroup.com. And thanks for listening.